Welcome once again to the Potter's Media, and this is your final right. I'm still continuing on the video which I want to do concerning Dr. Ebe Edamina. Now, first of all, I must establish uh, some things which I saw in that video that I am well pleased with. And there's this aspect which I feel uh, I've not got to see a lot of bloggers come to publish, which is the aspect where he answered the question of that lady. I want to ask this question because it's it's costs. I mean, in this world, we believe that there's a God. And, but it's not only Christians that live in this world. We have Muslims, we have Buddhists. I mean, my sister here is a Muslim. We have Buddhists, we have Jews. people from Jew, people from all, you know, seven, I mean, diverse religions. And for some people, I mean, some Christians that I have seen, when Buddhists or Muslims are, you know, they're like, oh, we have one creator or are there, are, do we have several gods that made us severally and when we leave this world we are going back to several creators well the, the f now before we go into his response i want us to understand regardless of how brilliant he came out in that podcast that doesn't stay on the score there was there are some things that are fundamentally wrong in his doctrine okay and my brother gideon was able to list them out in one of the videos which he did that. so the places where dr damina makes his mistakes are mostly on essential doctrine so he fought on many majors and then he's right in many minors i don't know whether you get it so yes he preaches jesus christ he preaches redemption through jesus christ but then there are many others that are essential to the gospel of the lord jesus christ which is not getting right which he has been adamant to and so until he comes out and recounts them and changes his understanding and his message in those areas from this side he cannot be recommended so in christianity not every error carries the same weight. Some are heavier than others, and the ones Dr. Damina makes have eternal consequences. Example, on the nature of God, he says God doesn't have wrath. Now, that is a serious error that should not be encouraged. God has wrath. The Bible is replete with it. And not just that, he says Jesus Christ is the Father, Jesus is the Holy Spirit, the Father is Jesus, the Father is the Holy Spirit. They only, he only takes different modes for the purpose of redemption and that without redemption, there wouldn't have been Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Which means that Jesus is not actually God because if without redemption, there wouldn't be Son and Holy Spirit, then it means that the Son and the Holy Spirit came in because of redemption and so they are not eternal because eternity does not have beginning, neither does they have end. Do you understand? He also said the angels at the ascension of Jesus Christ lied because they didn't know much. And that's very, very insulting. In fact, it's a slap in the face of God because God brought the angels when Jesus ascended. They said this same Jesus you have seen ascended is going to come back the same way he ascended. And you say the angels lied. He only disappeared to appear in us. And so he didn't go anywhere. He disappeared in the skies to appear in us. Meanwhile, the Bible says that Jesus went to heaven and he sat at the right hand of the Father. So these errors these are heresies that carry weight you understand if you don't believe that jesus is in heaven if you don't believe that jesus is truly god he doesn't have a beginning then you don't know what christianity is about even the elders in heaven are not safe with damina damina says they don't know much and that they call jesus a lion and that a lion is a destructive animal look at that so listen these are the reasons why he cannot be recommended one of the things he also says is that not everyone in the world is a sinner not all have sinned when the Bible is emphatic, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And for that matter, everybody needs redemption through Jesus Christ. No, the sin of Adam did not affect any other person apart from Adam. Now, and to these heresies, I say again, are openly recounted. Dr. Damina, although very eloquent, very good with preaching Jesus Christ and what Jesus has done, can't be recommended. He left the prosperity gospel. In fact, he has the prosperity gospel and the preachers on chokehold. He's pressing them every day. But then, until he also rectifies these excesses in his messages and his doctrine, he is even more dangerous than them. So, have this in mind as we get into the response of Dr. Ibe Damina. First thing to establish is, what's the reason for divergent religions? Why do we even have religions, diverse religions all over the world? Religion is man's effort to meet up with God's standard. That's religion. Man's effort, man's search in order for man to meet up with God's standard. Mortal man has always had a problem. And the problem is, how can mortal man who only knows how to sin come into a relationship with an immortal God who cannot stand sin? That's the dilemma of all of humanity. How can an imperfect man relate with a perfect God? 
a man whom all he knows is frailty, weaknesses, and inabilities. How can he come into a relationship with a God who does not have any form of weakness? So Job now said, if there is a mediator, one that can mediate between God and man, then God will have mercy on man. Now that mediation is the reason for religions. So when somebody begins to look for a relationship with God in a particular way and it doesn't work, he's not satisfied, he carves out another way. If he's not satisfied, he carves out another way. So all the religions are a pursuit for a relationship with God Almighty. Now, in that pursuit for that relationship is where a man keeps going until he finds that relationship or that genuine conviction about this relationship. So the question now will be, how do we know when you have established that relationship that guarantees you an assurance with God? Well, there are many factors. Number one, the moment you have a relationship with God, that guarantees, the first thing is salvation. All of humanity wants to be saved. All of humanity wants to be confident in their relationship with God. Most religions in the world agree mm. that Jesus will judge the world. Most religions in the world agree that Jesus will judge the world. So if Jesus will judge the world, then I want to find out who this Jesus is that will judge the world. I want to find out why do most religions agree that Jesus will judge the world? What qualifies him to judge the world? And I also want to find out how do I come into terms with he that will be the one to judge me? So that is where the issue of, of the, the Christian faith comes into play. Now, like I said not too long ago, God is not a Christian. And Jesus wasn't a Christian I was coming there. because Christianity started in Antioch mm -hmm. under the teaching ministry of Brother Paul. So which means before Antioch, people who believed in Jesus were not called Christians. What were they called? They were called believers. Mm -hmm. Believers. All through the book of Acts, they were called believers. Now, so God is not a Christian and Jesus is not a Christian. All right. So what is God's religion? God has no religion. Mm. In that mm. God, sorry. I'm coming. Sorry, sorry. God has no religion. Mm. So what? How do people approach God? God has made it so easy. First of all, the Bible tells us even nature will teach you that there's God. I mean, mm -hmm. it's easy. Even nature. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm sitting now, and I can stand up now, and I can sit now. There must be some intelligence behind that action. Yeah. Look at the planet. Look at the mountains. Look at the seas. Look at the outer space. Look at the, Plants. I mean, look at the whole way the world is. Far. You know that there's, there's, I mean, God is real. Now, but this God saw man's weakness, man's inability, man's, you know, man's total, total, you know, hopelessness. Man cannot help himself. Man cannot <laughs> save himself. Man cannot rescue himself from the problem of sin. So God Almighty became a man in the person of Jesus Christ. He became a man because he loves man. He looked at the oil wells of the Niger Delta in Nigeria. They couldn't pay for man's sins. He looked at the gold mines in Ghana. They couldn't pay for man's sins. He looked at, you know, the, all the precious stones in Congo, the diamonds. They couldn't pay for man's sins. But God loves man. And man is languishing in the hands of sin. So God says, well, if I love man, I've got to prove it. So God became a man in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus is God who became a man so that he can die on behalf of man. It is called a substitutionary sacrifice. He took my place in death so I can take his place in life. He was rejected so I can be accepted. He went to hell so I can go to heaven. That is the sacrifice of Jesus for all of humanity. And it is in historical books that Jesus actually died. It is in historical books that he was buried. It's in historical books that he rose the third day. And when he rose, he didn't rise and disappear. He appeared to over 500 men who witnessed the resurrection, documented the account, and is still out there in historical books. Joseph of Arimathea was a known figure in Israel. It was his grave that was used. Mm -hmm. And when the Roman soldiers took Jesus to the grave, 
the Roman government ensured that the grave was sealed so that nobody can open it because Jesus said he was going to rise. And they brought soldiers to guard the grave. And on the third day, the grave was empty and he wasn't stolen. And the stone, the seal was not broken, but the grave was empty. He rose triumphantly. And when he rose, he appeared and began to explain his salvation plan to those disciples that followed him. He began to explain to him his plan of salvation. And when he left, they took that message and brought that message to the world. So today, the gospel of Christ is not religion. The gospel of Christ is the message of a relationship with God that is predicated on the sacrifice that God made in Christ to pay for man's sin so that man can escape from the judgment of sin that is to come. Mm. No, yeah. You know, first of all, if not for anything, this explanation has been able to clarify when he said he's not only Christian that will go to heaven, all right? I think he was able to do a brilliant job on this, okay? And also, you know, there was something he mentioned which has been one of the two we use when we get to talk to talk with some of our Muslim folks that find it difficult to understand how is it possible that Jesus is God. And the simple answer is in this. God is supreme. Okay, and if God is supreme, God can decide to become anything because he is God, he's what I created. So he chose to be to become man in the person of Christ Jesus. You know, I don't really know why it's so difficult for Islams to understand. But I believe what Damina explained there, any, anybody who truly wants to find out why is it that their religion gets to talk about Jesus. This real explanation. God is supreme. God created anything. God can decide what can be and what cannot be. And in the na- in the person of Christ Jesus, he became man. This is God that decided to become man in the person of Jesus for the purpose of redemption and for the purpose of salvation. I do want to know what you think about this video, right? Please do make sure to leave your comments on the comment section. They are all appreciated.